Hey guys, and welcome back to another video. So, today we will be making potassium carbonate from cream of tartar. Now, cream of tartar can be bought at uh, Thrifty Foods or some other grocery store, and can be found at most grocery stores, and is, um, chemically speaking, it is made of potassium bitartrate. So, I've measured out here 25 grams of potassium bitartrate in this little cup here, and when decomposed, it decomposes into calcium carbonate, or potassium carbonate, sorry, and, um, releases tartaric acid. Now, the problem is, is that, um, it, it has several impurities, the, um, uh, cream of tartar that you buy from the store. So the first thing we're going to have to do is, um, recrystallize this to get rid of any impurities. This can be done by simply dissolving it. Um, it's five, about six grams will dissolve in a hundred milliliters of water. So I'm going to play it safe and go with five, just so that we don't have anything left over. And, um, so 25 grams here, we'll have to have used 500 milliliters of burning hot boiling water to dissolve all of this. Now it is barely sol soluble in water at less than a gram per hundred milliliters at room temperature. So your water must be hot and for this reason it is possible to do a recrystallization. So first I will um, boil uh, 500 milliliters of water and um, add this to that boiling water and make sure everything dissolves. Then we can filter off any of the other um, particulate and be left with the solution to recrystallize. So go ahead and add this to a bunch of water. Okay, so in this jar here, there's about 50 grams of potassium bitartrate dissolved in here, and this is actually a liter of water. I did double it, and um, I will end up dissolving that entire box in water, but um, recrystallization happens extremely fast, because with these elevated temperatures, the solution was clear about 30 seconds ago, but um, as soon as it starts decreasing, you're immediately going to get potassium bitartrate starting to precipitate out. And you can see it all falling to the bottom down here at the bottom. Their solution is slightly cloudy as crystals are forming and swirling around. You can kind of see them. They form on top, I'm finding, and float to the bottom as the top is the coolest. Anyhow, so we're going to go ahead and stick this in the freezer to try to get as much to precipitate as possible, and then filter it off. So I'll meet you as soon as I've done that. Okay, so if you see in here, you can see all the beautiful little crystals falling to the bottom. I just put it in the freezer a moment ago, um, and we're going to bring it right down to quite, uh, even below zero, just to make sure that hopefully everything falls out of solution. Although it isn't very soluble at zero degrees Celsius, so we shouldn't have to worry too much. Anyhow, I just thought it was really beautiful watching all those crystals fall out. So I'll go do a couple more matches of this, and then we'll see what we get in the end. Okay, so after the recrystallization, I just put in this uh, baking pan and set it out to dry. And now you can see we have these beautiful crystals of very pure potassium bitartrate. So, potassium bitartrate, I found out, decomposes around 250 degrees Celsius, which is um, just above the temperature that our oven can maximum um, reach. But I feel like that's not going to be sufficient enough to de decompose everything. So what I'm instead going to be doing is using this high temperature distillation apparatus, which we made in a previous video. Now, we're not going to be distilling anything, but this uh, will act as a nice crucible to uh, destructively decompose this um, potassium bitartrate. It will decompose into potassium carbonate, and um, it, it, it will uh, decompose into the lactate ion. Um, so if we had something like sodium metal in the presence, it would be um, sodium lactate. I did a bit of research, but... Um, it's not going to form lactic acid, so it might just crumble apart into carbon and a couple such as wa uh, other things such as water and uh, release some oxygen or something similar to that. Um, and I found out that potassium carbonate will not decompose to potassium oxide until an excess of over 1,200 degrees Celsius, which a blowtorch cannot reach. A uh, propane blowtorch, that is. So um, this will definitely work for uh, destructively decomposing this. And... Um, Hopefully it will burn off all of our carbon to carbon dioxide. We'll be left with a nice, beautiful um, potassium carbonate. This is actually the method that they used to do to produce something called pearl ash, which is essentially potassium carbonate. They would heat it up super hot until all the other impurities decomposed and were gone. And then you're left with a nice white powder. Anyhow, so I have a funnel here and um, part of the distillation apparatus which goes down into the tube. So I'm going to fill this up with a bunch of our potassium bitartrate and I'll meet you back. So you can see, to decompose everything, we'll take a couple of runs with this, but that shouldn't matter. Now, uh, keep in mind that if you have a bigger um, apparatus, you could do much more, but um, anyhow, yeah, make sure you only fill it up to about right here, which is uh, this first joint, because this and below is what's going to get the hottest. And we want to make sure that everything decomposes so that there's no impurities left. So anyhow, we can now take this outside and set this up by inserting this down into our uh, chamber here and um, inserting a blowtorch here and igniting it. 
Now we just don't we just have an open port here to allow any gases to escape. Um, and you don't really need this extra tube if you don't want. I just put it on there. Just, I don't know why. Um, anyhow, so we're going to go ahead and start heating this thing up. And you should leave it in the furnace for probably 20 to 25 minutes to make sure everything definitely decomposes. Because we don't want any impurities in our potassium carbonate. Okay, so as you can see, a copious amount of white fuming is happening. So this is very, um, it's a good sign that we're definitely decomposing our chemical. So, um... I don't know if you guys can see down in there, but yeah, you can see it's glowing red hot down in there. So, we'll just let this run for another good 15 minutes or so and uh, check on it then. Um, we'll definitely probably wait till the fuming stops and then do an extra 5 minutes um, of decomposition after the fuming, fuming has stopped. Anyhow, so I'll meet you back when that's done. This is actually rather interesting. So the smoke stopped, then started up. You see a drip on the end, and we've been dripping down at the bottom here. We're actually distilling some sort of compound. I have no clue what the compound is, and I'm not going to be saving it because it's extremely impure, and it's very black, and because I don't know what it is, it wouldn't be of much use, but I find that kind of interesting. Anyhow, so I'll just continue with this. I've also covered it with a piece of metal to help warm things up some more, and trap some of the heat. <coughs> okay, so the uh, smoke has essentially stopped coming out, and um, I think this is good, so we'll open it up, and we do have more uh, potassium bitartrate to decompose, so we'll use this as a basis to see what happens. So, first step is to turn off your blowtorch, move that to the side, and uh, you can see it's glowing very hot down there. Um, next step, we'll take off this. Let's get that off there. I actually have these enlarged so that if I grabbed the top ones, that was kind of difficult to do. And, let's see. Now, we have to try to remove are glowing white hot wow look at that thing that has definitely decomposed everything I think that this is gonna have a good chance of working I'll cool this off and uh, when it's cool I'll bring it inside and we can examine what's inside of here so uh, I'll meet you inside okay so that was rather interesting I took apart your apparatus and these two pieces would not separate they had fused together or something I pried them apart or tried to pry them apart as hard as I could with uh, two different pliers, I put them in a vise and tried to pry them apart. They wouldn't come apart, and believe me, I tried. But that's okay because I just added some water and dissolved everything. You can see in here we're left with a very black solution. It did not turn out white as I th was hoping, but um, anyhow, so I have some uh, uh, pH paper here, and upon dipping the pH paper into our solution, you can see that it's extremely basic. This does not mean that we have potassium hydroxide, but rather confirms the presence of potassium carbonate, as potassium carbonate forms an extremely basic solution. Now, there was a lot less of this black stuff than I was expecting, but I couldn't imagine why, because we shouldn't have been um, boiling off any of our um, um, potassium carbonate because it would decompose, and our apparatus did not get hot enough to decompose the calcium carbonate. And um, anyhow, so I'm kind of confused about that, but maybe it's just because there was... Um, the um, cream of tartar does not actually contain that m much potassium, which could uh, be the reason for uh, that. Anyhow, so perhaps what I'll do in a future um, attempt, in a moment, is simply just take it and heat it up with a blowtorch till it decomposes, because that'll probably be easier and less energy intensive. Now, the nice thing about this is um, we can actually hopefully filter off our solution. Because we heated it so high, everything should have decomposed Except for, of course, carbon. Um, and I'm really hoping that uh, this is black carbon here, which we can just filter off and our solution will be nice and clear. But that's a big if, so uh, we'll have to see how that goes. Anyhow, so I'm going to go set up a coffee filter and try to filter off this solution and see what color of solution we get. Okay, so we are filtering right now, as you can see, and our filtrate that's coming through is absolutely 100% clear. Which means that everything above is actually elemental carbon. Um, which is amazing because this solution should mostly contain potassium carbonate in it. Um, hopefully 100% pure potassium carbonate, but that's pretty high expectations. Anyhow, so I'm going to let this filter through, and um, when it's done filtering through, then we can go test and um, boil it down and see if we can um, obtain a nice white powder. So I'll let this filter through and meet you back. So after all that was complete, you can see that we have a beautifully clear solution of hopefully potassium carbonate. So I'm going to go ahead and stick this on um, a burner or something and boil off all of this until we're left with a powder. 
Um, I may transfer this to some other thing besides this glass jar, as um, this one has might be slightly difficult to get the potassium carbonate out of after. But nonetheless, I'm going to boil it down. So I'll meet you back as soon as I boiled it down. Okay, so I actually decided to boil it down in a beaker on my stove, and um, you can see that we're left with a beautiful powder here. And this, I did break it up, it was stuck to the bottom, but that's fine. And this powder, uh, I'm not totally sure how much it is, but it's definitely calcium carbonate, or uh, sorry, potassium carbonate, which I'm super excited about. And her yield wasn't exceptionally amazing, but this is definitely potassium carbonate. And my, I, I'm not sure if we lost any due to the uh, really high temperatures, but um, we have lots more potassium bomb, or uh, cream of tartar, which we purified. Um, to our potassium bitartrate, which we can further experiment with. So I might r run a few more tests and just see which works the best. I think the first thing I'm going to do is just simply take a crucible and heat it up with a blowtorch, rather than doing that uh, much more uh, energy-intensive um, distillation-type apparatus, which I had set up earlier. So just heat it up really hot with the torch, and uh, decompose it that way, and follow similar steps as before with the filtering off and boiling down, and just see what I get. So I'll be back when I've done that. Okay, so I took some of that potassium bitartrate and put it in a little crucible and heated it up with a blowtorch and it became black and everything. And um, I just did it until there was no more smoke coming off in the open air. And at one point, interestingly enough, uh, flames started appearing and it was a self-sustaining uh, combustion at the elevated temperatures as the container was very hot. Anyhow, I made sure that everything was torched really well and then dissolved it into solution and filtered it off as before. But as you can see, our solution is rather clear, but much more cloudy than before. Like, if I line the camera up exactly with our solution, you can see it's quite difficult to actually see through. So, this is most likely because of particles in suspension, or perhaps still some organic compounds which never got broken down properly. So, um, it's definitely much more beneficial to use the other method where we absolutely destructively break down everything. But, I think we might still be able to get some calcium carbonate out of this, as it is extremely basic. So, first thing I'm going to do is transfer it to this uh, small beaker here and boil everything down as shown before. And perhaps we'll be able to extract um, the pure potassium carbonate from that. So, I'll go ahead and do that. Okay, so I boiled down the solution and it is impure and I haven't purified it at all. And here's our first run we got. You can see we got a fair amount here and there is actually a tad more here. Um, now, there's I, I'm sort of a bit surprised by this. Um, because I thought we would get more, but there was no loss that I was aware of there. So it must just be the low concentration of the potassium ion in potassium bitartrate, which led to us getting a lot less final product than um, we started with, because most of it was in the uh, form of other compounds and other molecules. Anyhow, so this is uh, still pretty excellent, and... To finish up with this, I'll just add it to future runs because I'm pretty sure that that really high temperature um, uh, decomposition method is better because you just filter it off and there's no carbon impurities or dark solution or anything. So I'll simply add this to more potassium bitartrate and heat it up really, really hot, similarly to before to decompose everything, and that will decompose any impurities in here. Um, and then we'll be able to recover it from that. Anyhow, so let's basically have to get calcium carbonate from potassium bitartrate, and um, it is important to uh, note that this calcium carbonate or potassium carbonate um, will be used um, to produce potassium hydroxide. Now, potassium hydroxide is um, can be easily made by electrolyzing a solution of potassium chloride in a split division electrolysis cell, but this, I've tried this before and it's a pain in the butt and the yield is extremely low and it just eats up a lot of electricity. I find that this method is actually much um, more reasonable despite the lot, rather low amount of potassium carbonate you get um, and potassium bitartrate is rather expensive. But uh, this can be pretty easily turned to potassium hydroxide and I will be showing you how to do that in a future video. It also works excellent for neutralizing acids produce potassium salts and I will be using this to neutralize some hydrofluoric acid, which I will produce in a f future video, to make some potassium fluoride, which is necessary for the extraction of uh, fluorine. And I do plan on making fluorine um, in a long convoluted procedure, which I have already planned out, and um, will be taking the proper safety gear and time to carefully plan and make every step very careful. So, if we are going to do this, we are going to need some potassium carbonate or potassium hydroxide to neutralize the acid.
Anyhow, so I guess I uh, hope you enjoyed, and uh, thanks for watching. It's also important to note that the uh, potassium carbonate is corrosive, so do not get it on your skin, or else it will burn your skin. Okay, thanks for watching. Wait, bye.